Hi there and welcome to this short video presentation about Twitter data mining for sentiment analysis um, using rapid mining of course. Now if you happened to stumble upon this video somewhere on YouTube um, there's actually more to it because this footage is um, effectively a continuation or an extension of a blog post which I wrote um, in relation to mining Twitter data which you can conveniently find on my website bicortex.com so um, to find out more about how you can actually get your hands on a decent sized data set um, of all kinds of tweets as well as how to prepare clean import that data um, before you can do any sort of classification or analysis um, please head over to bicortex.com where you should be able to find all the details back to rapid mining again and um, before we go through all those um, individual components which make up the solution, there's two things which I would like to mention first. Um, number one, in order to do text mining at Rapid Miner, you should have what's called text mining extension installed. And from memory, you should be able to do that from within the application itself. Um, in other words, there's no need to go on the internet and look for um, updates, upgrades, packages, plugins, downloads, so on and so forth. Um, Rapid Miner should be able to handle that for you. And there we go. Text mining extension. If you don't have it installed, uh, it should be as easy as clicking on install packages button down here. Um, in my case, it's grayed out as I've already got installed and you should be good to go. Another thing which I like to mention is using flat files as data sources. Now, what I initially intended to do was to use text files or Excel spreadsheets or CSV files to store my Twitter data. And what I found was that Rapid Miner was really, really slow. Um, now, I'm not sure whether that was because of the application itself or the hardware specs um, of my machine or perhaps the volume of data I was trying to extract. Um, for instance, that Excel spreadsheet had over 1 million records sitting in it, but Rapid Miner really took its time and um, on a number of occasions it would just crash halfway through and refuse to cooperate. So, what I decided to do um, was to actually import that data into my local instance. Um, of Microsoft SQL Server database which I've got installed on the same box um, and read the data out of database tables as opposed to flat files. Now in terms of performance improvements I have to say that um, I noticed quite considerable difference however this introduces another level of complexity, another step to the whole solution, because in order to read the database uh, tables um, or to insert Twitter data into database tables, I had to create another separate ETL package or Microsoft SQL Server integration services package, which reads the data out of uh, flat files or CSV files or whatever you choose to store your data in and uh, inserts that data into uh, into the database. As you can see here, there's three separate uh, data sources um, linked to three separate files. One contain, containing all the negative Twitter feeds, another one containing all the Twitter feeds with positive connotations and yet another one containing all the Twitter feeds which have not been classified as yet. and as this um, ETL runs, there's also a tiny bit of dynamic SQL wrapped around the store procedure, uh, which executes as the final step solely for the purpose of uh, cleaning or cleansing the data out of some of the unwanted characters or strings. What I found was that over 90% of all the Twitter feeds contained references to some of the popular URL shortening services such as bit.ly or tiny URL and even though they're perfectly valid in the context of individual tweets they don't really um, bring anything to the table in terms of performance improvements or data quality so um, this SQL code facilitates 
um, the removal of those strings making the remaining parts sort of less polluted or more universal language compliant, so to speak. Um, also, as I said before, this sort of setup um, introduced a certain amount of additional overhead as we're not simply reading the data out of a flat file or Excel spreadsheet. But in the long run, I think giving a large performance improvements and the ability to format, clean, uh, filter the data more effectively, um, I think it's a good feature to have uh, or to implement if you have access to some of those tools. Um, and of course, all this code, um, as well as the SSIS package and individual files with uh, Twitter data can be downloaded from my website, bicortex.com. That's bicortex.com. Again, back to Rapid Mine Environment and a quick tour of all the individual components that make up this solution. Uh, first of all, we've got a read database operator, which, as the name suggests, um, connects to um, the database via its predefined uh, SQL Server connection. And in the query or built SQL query pane, we've got two really simple um, select statements joined together via this union or expression. Um, top one selecting 100,000 positive feeds, bottom one selecting 100,000 negative feeds um, with their corresponding IDs and, and sentiments. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to reduce that number down to 1,000 records on each side um, as we're going to run this solution to see how it performs and what the output is like. And um, by means of reducing that number, um, I will have a chance to shorten the processing time by a huge margin. Next one, we have set role operator. Actually, one of the four set role operators used in this solution. And in this case, um, it is simply here for the purpose of being able to retain the identity uh, field, which otherwise is irrelevant to model training, to maybe um, being able to link um, the individual records back to their source via this ID attribute that we're selecting from the read database component and its corresponding SQL um, select statement. Um, this is the ID field um, that um, I'm passing to um, this name right here in the set role operator. Following on, we've got process documents from data operator and if you look on the right hand side here you will notice that options such as create word vector add meta information and keep text uh, tick boxes have all been ticked also for the vector creation option we're going to be selecting tf idf now if we drill down on that process document from data operator by double clicking that will take us to the vector creation pane and here we've got four additional components uh, number one, tokenize, which simply breaks down strings into individual tokens or words. Transform cases operator, which um, transforms strings into lowercase. Filter stop words op operator, which removes English stop words from the document. And finally, we've got filter tokens by length, which gets rid of all the strings which have less than um, three characters and more than 999 characters out of a data set. Um, next up, we've got set, another set role operator. Um, this time, um, for the name option, we've selected sentiment attribute, and for the target role, uh, we're going to be selecting label. Next up, we've got a validation component. Um, probably the most important component of this solution. And we're going to be setting number of validations or number of passes to five, um, which should be substantial enough. And if we drill down, um, you'll notice that the pain is split between training and testing sections. On the training um, section, we've got select attributes component, and we're going to be selecting no missing values. Um, we also begin doing conversion from nominal to binomial, and finally, we're going to be applying SVM or support a vector machine linear 
um, training algorithm typically used for classification or um, regression analysis. Um, on the testing side, we're going to be um, applying the model that's already learned itself or trained itself, and we're also going to be measuring its performance. So we've gone through all the um, components or operators used for our model creation and training, um, which is this top section of our solution here. And you'll probably notice that the bottom part, which is um, which is responsible for handling our test data, uh, shares some similarities um, in terms of using or reusing some of those components. However, there are some key differences here. Um, starting from the left-hand side, from our second read database operator, um, you will notice that uh, we're going to be selecting data out of an entirely different table. We're going to be using Twitter test data table, which holds all the, all the data which has not been classified as yet. Also, I'm going to be selecting only 100 records um, simply for performance reasons. Um, next one up is set row operator. Um, this is identical to the one used above. Um, the same goes for process documents from data. Um, they are exactly the same. Uh, final set rule operator used in our test data. Um, here for the name attribute, we're going to be specifying text option. And for the target role, we're going to be selecting label. And Finally, um, we're going to be using apply model operator, which simply um, applies an already learned or trained model um, on our example set. The last thing to do is to run the solution to see what happens um, during the execution as well as how well it performs. So let's kick it off clicking on that blue button up here. Um, and given the fact that we're only going to be doing five validations or five passes um, and that we're only selecting 2000 records from the training data set and 100 records from our test data set um, i believe we should have the results uh, fairly soon you can see the um, progress status down here um, as it runs and there we go. We've got our results. So let's have a look at the stats. And for performance, for predicting positive uh, versus negative, we get 61% class prediction for positive and 75% for class prediction negative, which is, um, I guess, respectable given the fact that we only used 2000 records for model training um, let's have a look at the actual example sets and some concrete examples um, in the text column we've got the actual twitter content uh, or twitter feeds um, so let's have a look at some of the positive ones interesting post well big data talent management that was classed as positive however big data mastercard took stake hot big data startup business insider um, that was classified as negative so this is it thanks very much for watching and happy data mining